Welcome back, this is Victor Campos again. In the previous videos, we created a key store file, which is our developer certificate. Then we created our final for release ready APK file. Next, it's time to create a developer's account to actually publish it. So open your web browser because we have a few options. We have, of course, the Google Play Store, play.google.com. This is where you can upload your apps and get a wide audience. You have to sign in, create an account and such. The thing here is that you have to pay about $28 one-time fee to be able to publish your apps. Even if you're going to give your apps away for free, you need to pay for that developer's account. You would access that at developer.android.com. It's your Play Console. The other screen is just for consumers. This is for developers, the Play Console screen. If you would like to, you could create an, an Android developer account and pay the amount to publish. For this class, I'm going to go to the alternate route of using Amazon. Amazon.com has also an Android app store, but the great thing about it is that it's completely free. So if you go to developer.amazon.com, we have Amazon's portal where you can access a variety of their features and also then publish your apps for Android. So that's what this video will be about, creating your Amazon developer account to publish to the Amazon App Store. It's going to be a similar process for the Android App Store, Google Play. It's just that it will not be free with Google Play. Top right corner, I'll click Sign In. You can use an existing Amazon account or create a new one. I'm going to create a brand new one, a fake account, just for testing purposes. If you're going to upload your app for real, you should set it up with your real credentials. So create. There'll be a lot of information to fill in, which should be obvious. There's the terms and conditions that uh, no one reads, but everyone agrees to. So you want to create. There'll be a variety of information to fill in. Some of it is optional, some of it is not. Country, first name, last name, email, phone number required. So you want to fill in a phone number here. Uh, I'm going to make one up. But this is required for you as a developer. Fax number optional, of course, because it's not 1986 anymore. Developer name or company. So you can be a developer right away. You don't have to fill out any special paperwork. You just fill that in there. Description of you as a developer, up to 4,000 characters. You can fill in things such as Android apps for educational purposes, focused on easy to use software. Anything you'd like that helps you get found. Address. You can have a P.O. box here or your real address or whatever makes sense. Zip code. Now we've got a customer support email, a customer support phone, and a customer support website. These are listed as optional at the moment here, but they will become required later on. So you might as well fill it in. And this can be the same things you filled in before, and these can be all fake. But again, if you are going to publish apps for real, this stuff should be real. Save and continue. Here's the agreement. If you didn't read it before, here's the app developer's agreement. And basically it says Amazon will take a cut of your profits. You will not abuse the system. You're not going to create apps that are destructive, etc. By the way, the cut that Amazon takes is 30%. So if you're selling a 99 cent app, you'll get about 70 cents and they get about 30 cents from your apps. Your free apps, well, they also take 30% of that, but you know, 30% of zero is zero. So, okay, looks good. I'm going to accept it. Payments. Are you going to sell your apps or not? Do you plan to monetize your apps? If you say yes, you'll have to fill in a variety of information for a real bank so that they can pay you. Again, you'll need to decide if you're going to sell apps or not, and this can be changed at any time. 
but I'm going to set it as no, I won't sell my apps. Do you want to monetize your apps, however, in other ways by adding ads? You select yes on that, you still have to fill in the same information. For my purposes at the moment, no, I'm not going to sell my app, and no, I'm not going to put ads. So I'll save. This is the portal. You'll get a variety of information, up-to-date announcements, and such. At the top is my dashboard. All the apps that I've created are listed at the top. If you want to dabble with Alexa, it's listed there. Your reports of how many apps you've downloaded or sold and such are listed, support documentation, and so forth. I've got an app that I'm going to upload. So under Apps and Services, My Apps, I have no apps. If you click the button, am I going to publish an Android app, a mobile web app, or a PC or Mac app for computers, not for a mobile device? I'm going with an Android app. Next. What's the title of my app? So this is CBDB. I would ask if you are going to upload your project for this class, call it something like Jones CBDB. So this differentiates it from your classmates. The stock keeping unit or SKU is not necessary. This is just some keyword that you can use to differentiate your many apps from each other in your system. Category, select what makes sense. Let's see, our comic book database. Well, it's up on comics and books here. Subcategories, book info and review, readers and players, ebook creation, book info. So the support information from the previous screen is filled in and now it's required. Save that. I get these new tabs to fill in. All of these must become green in order for me to be able to submit my app. I have the general information screen completed. If you need to change any of this, you can edit this screen. I've got one of six. Availability and pricing. So available in all countries, some countries, you can change that. Is it free or not? You can change that. Has this been released in any other app store before? No, in my case, no. But if you did release this on some other app store, you can write, you can write yes and when. And when would you like this app to be available? Not filling it in will make it appear as soon as you publish it, almost. Save that. I have two greens. Description. This is the name that will display in the App Store of Amazon. What is a description that is short? Required. Description that's long? Required. Bullet points about the project? and keywords. I would say to fill all of these in, the newest and best comic book tracking app. Track your comic book collection the easy way. And you have up to 4,000 characters. Bullet points. Save unlimited comics, store name, year, title, and more, scan barcodes, add photos. What are the things that the app can do? Keywords. So comic, comic book, Marvel, DC, whatever you'd like. And we want to save. Not save and add translation. That will save the English version of this text, where then you can save the Spanish version or the Japanese version, etc., which you have to provide. So simply click Save. I have three greens. I'm going to skip images and multimedia for a moment. I'll come back to it. Content rating. We have to rate our app so that it's found by the right audience. Is there any violence in our app? Nope. Cartoon violence? Nope. Drugs? Nope. Nudity? Nope. Basically all of these are no. Is this academic? Nope. Just fill all of that in as it makes sense. 
additional info, account creation or personal info collected. Yes, a person creates an account to use our app. Are there advertisements? No. Is your app directed at kids under 13? Nope. It's for everyone, but not really directed to them. Is there gambling? No. Location detection? No, it doesn't track your location. Is there user-generated content? Yes, the user fills in a lot of information. If this doesn't make sense, a lot of these have a learn more, and you can also get more documentation at the top. Privacy policy required. This one's a little bit tricky because it needs to have an address to a location online where you have some sort of privacy policy. What you can do to fill this in is you need a website with a link and on that link you write a privacy policy. So you can look up app privacy policy template and find some template online, customize it to your particular app and how you'd like to present yourself, upload it somewhere, and then submit it. You can kind of make this up at the moment to point to some place that doesn't exist, but you'll want to set it to a real place eventually. Save. Four out of six. Binary files. This is now where we can use the APK file we created on the previous videos. We apply DRM, so that's encryption and protection, yes. Uh, this uh, certificates, just leave it as is. Binary file, you can click then to upload your APK file. Mine is on the desktop. So I've got their cbdb1.apk. That'll be uploaded, it'll be scanned, and it'll give you feedback if there are any issues. So after it uploads, it'll show the information of the project, the package, that's that reverse domain name that's in your config XML file, version code, version name, etc. You can really only view this, you can't edit it. That comes from your config XML file. This will be uh, usable by many, many, many devices. Some are unsupported, but I wouldn't worry about it and it's an English app. You have to accept the export compliance option here. Basically, you're saying that your app does not have encryption software, which cannot be exported from the US. If there are any maps in the app, they can be redirected to the Amazon Maps system and the alias. We can type the same thing we had before on the actual file any testing instructions. You can leave it as is. You want to click the yellow save, not the save and add binary. This is to upload multiple versions of your app for different devices. Select save. So now I have five out of six. The multimedia and images is the last tab I need to fill in before I can submit my app. And this one's kind of a complex one because this is the one where you need to provide a variety of assets. A small icon of 114 pixels, ping, and transparency. A large icon of 512 ping with transparency. Screenshots. I'll show you how to do screenshots in a moment. Promotional image recommended, but I would say go ahead and use it because it's just yet another way to promote your, your app. Optional, create a video about your, your app, how it's used and such. If you're going to target the Fire TV, you also need these. A couple of them are required. Notice the different sizes. So you need to fill in all of these items before you can save and then eventually publish the app. All of these you have the knowledge to do, except for screenshots. There are a few ways to do this, and so let me show you one way. So I've got a screen sharing software. It's called Team Viewer, but you don't need this to do what I'm about to show you. I just need Team Viewer to show you what's happening on my device. So I'm going to run the CBDB app, and on Android, you can take screenshots 
by holding down the power button and the down arrow keys at the same time. So that was a screenshot. I held power, then down arrow, and it made a screenshot. So the idea perhaps is to go to different screens and take screenshots. These screenshots are going to be saved to the device. Then I can take those files off of the device into my computer. So after you've taken these screenshots on the device, it's simply a matter of opening the device from your computer and navigating to the screenshots folder and grabbing those graphics. So you see here I've navigated to the screenshots folder on my device and I see the screenshots that I just created. I can copy those to my desktop and now I have screenshots to use on the App Store. So this file I can upload to the App Store. I simply select it and at least three of them to have the assets. This is the one that's going to take you the longer and I don't need to walk you step by step through all of this. Just create the icons as necessary, the screenshots, and then click Save. Once you've clicked Save, you'll have green for all of these and then you'll have a button to publish the app to the App Store. It'll be published to Amazon, but this is very similar to Google and you'll have a real app on the real app store.